Hey y'all, hello, this is Lauren from Mama's Learning Corner. Really appreciate you stopping back by today. Talking homeschool again today. Um, and the two things that I wanna show you in our homeschool are number one, the notebook that I use every single day that keeps like the brain, it's the brain of our homeschool. It really keeps things like rolling along. That's the first thing I want to show you. And then the second thing I want to show you is just how we organize our quizzes and tests and that type of thing. So let's go take a look. If this is your first time here and you've just stumbled across my channel, let me introduce myself to you quickly. Um, my name is Lauren. I blog at Mama's Learning Corner. Um, it's a website that offers worksheets, hands-on printable activities um, for preschool to about the fifth grade age range. Um, I do have lots of other uh, content about some about my big kids and what we're learning there. I always uh, have curriculum reviews, uh, those other types of homeschooly things that you might be looking for. I have five children. They are all the way from five and a half in kindergarten, a boy up to a 17 year old boy that's a senior in high school. And then I have three girls in between, sixth, eighth, and tenth. So very bittersweet. The last year I'll have all my children under one roof in our homeschool. So this has uh, been a challenging year for me, but also just a very sweet year for me. So let's get started on my notebook. So this is it. This is my notebook. It's a one and a half inch uh, three ring binder. And I'm going to turn the camera around in just a second and show it to you uh, page by page by page or section by section. But my whole goal with <laughs> most anything in life is to, especially my homeschool life, is to just put it on autopilot. I need to not have to sit down every single Sunday when I plan for our week and determine what in the world we're going to do for the week. I, I just don't, I just don't have that type of bandwidth or that type of time. Um, so everything is on autopilot for me that I can figure out how to get on autopilot. Meaning the lesson plans are already made. I'm just creating the sheet. Um, the, the, what makes this on autopilot for me is I literally flip to whichever child I'm on and see what they're doing for the week, um, or for the day or for, you know, the column that is, you know, Monday or the column that is Tuesday. And it helps me have an overall picture of the week. So my whole goal here is, is not having to re reinvent the wheel every single time I think about our school. So that's, that's the whole goal here. Okay. So let's take a look at this notebook. Now I use this every single day. It stays on my big, um, school table that is sitting on right now um, in our school room. I have a one and a half inch notebook, uh, one and a half inch three room binder is probably a more accurate description. And um, one will usually last me for two years. I did buy a new one this year just because I'm, I am kind of hard on them. Okay, so this is just a note to myself. Um, and I often have notes on my inside pages here. So this is the first section. And this is what's gonna house all of my calendars, my schedules, all of those type things for the year. So I always have a yearly calendar that has marked off the dates that we're gonna be off and the dates that we're in school. And then I have my attendance calendar um, and I go ahead and mark off the big dates that I know that we're gonna be out of school so we can look forward to them. Um, yeah, and then the tally of the school days goes along the bottom and it's only one page. The second semester is here on the back sheet. At the beginning of the year, I try, try, try. I try to make somewhat of a, a schedule, a routine that we can implement every single day. And the, the yellow is me. Um, and then the other colors are my children's online classes. And then we kind of work around other things that are going on in life. But the, but the things that don't move, the online classes or the in real life class, um, in, in person class, um, those are anchors and those never move. And so then I build the rest of our schedule around it. Um, so yeah, and that, that varies a little bit from week to week when we have class on different items, different subjects, but I mostly try and stick by the schedule. Um, I have a recitation list that my daughter and I are doing for a third form. I have the capitalization rules that my other daughter and I are doing. So these are, these are things that I reference at least once or twice a week. So that's why they're here in the front. Now the next section I have, and I use plastic, um, I use plastic binders for these, and I've, this is probably the third year I've used them. Um, I have one for each child. And so this is going to be my sixth graders schedule for the week. Uh, I print these in Publisher. They're custom for each child. Um, the date goes up here. They're only done by the, by the week. So the date goes up here. Um, and then their classes go down the side. I almost always put our 
um, our online classes up at the top and then they can easily see what is due for me. Um, typically they come and check off what has been done for the week. Sometimes we get to the end of the week and there hasn't been checks off and then I have to go find people and hunt them down and say, you know, what exactly, what, what are we missing here? And can, and please tell me that this has been completed. <laughs> Otherwise there's going to be trouble. Um, I mentioned in my curriculum videos that anything in yellow is a class time with me that is not usual. So you see, she doesn't have any, any class time with me in math because it's a given that she's going to have class time with me in math every single day. However, for Latin, we have class the first day and we have recitation on Tuesday, Thursday. So we don't have something daily. Um, literature class, we only met once this week. Uh, science class, we only met once this week. We had some other things on Friday. Otherwise, we probably would have pushed some, uh, had another class on Friday. Um, so th this was an unusual week for us, actually. And then anything in pink is going to be something you get a grade for. So in this case, it's reciting her Bible verses from Christian Studies 1, uh, Christian Studies 2, her Latin, her spelling test, her quizzes. And so I mentioned in these other videos that I color code my children. It does make me sad that this is not pink, but I can't find them, you know. Um, I can't find the colors for these, but I do color code my children since I have five of them. I need, um, I need things to be at a glance. So she is pink, always has been. And so when my eye sees pink, I know that it's going to be my, my baby girl. So I do these in order of age. I start with my sixth grader. I do not have anything in here for my kindergartner because I don't plan to this degree for my kindergartner. I'll show you how I do it. Um, it's in a separate, separate spot. So this is my middle girl who's in eighth grade. She's always in purple. And I see that I didn't get to um, color coding hers, but it usually looks like this. Um, last week, like I said, was just an off week for us. So class with me or some, some time with me is gonna be in yellow for different subjects. Um, and then assessments of any type, grades of any type are in purple. Okay, and then moving on to my oldest girl who's in 10th grade she's always been blue her classes at the top are um, online classes i do not go in and write what they're supposed to be doing um i'll show you what i do for those in just a minute but she's in 10th grade so she can certainly take responsibility of that and you know i've guided her and helped her understand what that should look like i hadn't just you know thrown it on her um so, and then usually on Sunday night when I plan, there's a long list of things that, that I need to do or quizzes that need to be pulled or so th this is my to-do list for this particular child. So I just make sure that, um, I see that my middle girl didn't have one last, last week or either I got it completed and threw it away. Hopefully, hopefully that was the case. Um, yeah, so these are my to-dos for the week. And then lastly, my boy who, um, I didn't do his in yellow either. Like, this is a better example of his. Um, he's in green. Um, these are when he has things due for me. The yellows are classes. And so I make all of these pages on Sunday night. And then I make a copy of them. They highlight their own pages and make it look like mine. So they know what they are doing for the week. Okay, and then if you flip one more section, these are... Oh, goodness. Yeah, this, is, this one's a little overwhelming. Look at all the little tabs over here. So, these are lesson plans, and hopefully I have a lesson plan for everything, and I'm not having to decide what to do on Sunday evening. That's the worst. That's the worst. So, this is our, this is the plan that I made for our quizzes. Um, I have a daughter that's taking just a discussion class with her famous men of the Middle Ages, and this is their discussion schedule. And then everything else I've got, um is going to be probably either Memorial Press lesson plans or plans that I've created myself. So here's the timeline schedule for grade six. I went through every single week of um, the grade six manual to see what dates they were gonna pull. And so this is so I don't have to look it up in the manual every week. My goal is for things to be on autopilot and this is how I manage it. Um, so like this is gonna be spelling and these are ones that I've created now. Um, let me show you one that I didn't. So this is like Memorial Press lesson plans. So I use their literature. We just finished a Hamlet. So I print them and I print the, I print it so there's a blank sheet on the first side. So then when you open it, it'll be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So you can see the whole, you can see the whole week, which is really helpful. 
And then I just print them front to back. This was only a five week lesson plan. Um, but look at this one. So this one's a four week. And then when you flip it over, if you print it this way, you'll be so happy you did. And so then you can just easily turn to the next one. It very much mimics the Memorial Press curriculum guides. This is the way that they're laid out. Um, really helpful. So I have these color coded according to my children and their color. So if I'm looking for something for my sixth grader, I just find pink. Um, and I have a little bit of it written here to just guide me. Um, so I don't have to flip through so many pages. So an example of a high school one, uh, this is my 10th and 12th grader are both taking world history together with me here at home. We're using BJU for that. So I've gone through the book and I've made lesson plans for, um, for each chapter of the book. So on Sunday night, all I have to do is sit down and write Monday's lesson 42. This is 43, Wednesday's 44, Thursday's 45, and then you have a chapter test on Friday. And then of course, I'll um, personalize that for us for the week. If you know we need to have class two days, um, there's gonna be a couple of quizzes in here. So that's what I, the, the, that's the way I lesson plan um, a book that doesn't, a, a curriculum that doesn't necessarily come with uh, homeschool friendly lesson plans. And so I make it homeschool friendly for myself. The last thing I wanna show you in the notebook is how I do online classes. They're all in orange, so I can just quickly see what the syllabus is for the week. Now, hmm, I love Memorial Press, but I think one of their biggest downfalls is that you're, it's not easy to make a paper copy of their lesson plans for the week. So I love how they have it split it up day one, day two, day three, day four. That's perfect. However, um, you have to spend some time copying this from a web page, putting it in Word, formatting it so it doesn't print on 55 sheets of paper. Um, there's no way to highlight when assignments are due on the hard copy. So that is the biggest drawback I have with Memoria Press. Love their content, love their teaching style, um, but that is a big drawback for me because I have found out the hard way that I need to also stay on top of my children's um, my children's activities for the week in their online classes. I can't just depend on them to get that done. They need to be under my thumb a little bit more. Um, so this one um, is in blue, so it must be for my oldest girl. This one's in green, so it must be for my oldest boy. Um, these are tests and when they are due, just for my own knowledge, so I can not have to look online every single time. Um, so mostly my big kids take online classes and they don't take all online classes, just a few here and there. This one's for my middle girl because it's in purple. Um, but so, so these are mostly so I can keep on track with what they are learning and studying and especially when assignments are due. But I also look at these to see if they're having um, a heavy week in these classes. If they have a really big paper due, if they have a large assignment due, then I'm gonna pull back on another subject that I teach them because there's only so many hours in the day. Um, and then if they need help with this type of project, is, is it a research paper? Um, so I can be available to help them with that. So I, I feel like there's a lot of give and, give and take um, when you have an online class and you're doing classes at home. Cause you know, everything can't be hard. Some things have to be a little bit lighter. And so on my end, I can make it lighter, even if their classes are like bulldozing through material. The last thing I want to show you is how we organize, how I organize our quizzes and tests. So with four children that take quizzes and tests, my little kindergartner, you know, he's just kind of, you know, doing phonics and math still. There's no, I, I don't test anything until at least third or fourth grade. And then only just very sparingly. But that's kind of a topic for another day. Um, so how I organize our quizzes and tests are, it goes um, from youngest to oldest. So it's going to be sixth, eighth, tenth, twelfth. Um, so anything I need for my sixth grader, I'm going to pull from the front. My girls, other girls are going to be in the middle, and then my boy is usually in the back. At the beginning of the year, I go ahead and print everything, every test that I know that we're going to have. I organize them um, uh, based on subject, and then all I have to do is just open it up and go. So for our next geography test, that's going to be sitting right there. Um, for our next timeline it's going to be sitting uh, I'm sorry second form Latin I'm just going to pull it from the stack so usually on Friday which is a big test day for us um, usually I pull all the all the tests that we're going to have I put them up here on the printer 
And then um, when you get ready, you come and tell me that you're taking your test. You never take a test without um, me knowing it, like pick it up off the counter. Don't ever do that without my knowing it. That's just a rule for us in our homeschool. And then, um, then you're welcome to proceed and take your test. Uh, but that's just kind of the guidelines that I have in place. So these are things that are either I've created or they're probably Memorial Press printed tests. Um, the other style that we have mostly is from BJU. And so for those, they're all in a bound, like they're in a bound um, glued container, uh, container. They're in a bound glued binder. And so I just write their names on the front um, and usually in their color, but I see I messed up with my girl there cause she's not green. Um, and so then I, I can just easily flip through and see which ones are next on our list. Um, yeah, and I want this little file, this little file, I'm sorry, this little wire file cabinet. These are the phonics cards that I'm using with my kindergartner this week. These are the spelling lists for my uh, middle girl this week. So it's just a really handy place to, you know, just for containment of all the things. Anyway, I've loved it. I've had it for years and years. Gosh, I've probably had it for 10 years and it's held up really well. I, and this is the way I've always used it. So yeah, it works for us. So I appreciate you watching today. I hope that'll give you a few ideas for your own homeschool. I always like to see what other people do and then pick out parts of it that would work for us or that would fit for us and then see if I can implement it to make our days run smoother. I'm always looking for ways to be more efficient with my time um, and just, just to be better in general. Um, the the more prepared that I am and the easier things run on my end, it goes so much smoother for the kids um, just in our day-to-day -day lives. The more prepared I am. The weeks that I am not prepared, the weeks that I do not have that sheet filled out are disastrous. They're just really, just really bad. Um, and occasionally that does happen. I mean, you know, life happens and I just don't get the sheets for every single person filled out for the week. That's the way it goes. Um, but nine times out of 10, I do have them completed and our, our days can, can, you know, move along at a good clip. Um, yeah, so take what you, take what you can get out of this and then implement what you'd like in your own homeschool and see how you can make things work better for yourself. I always pray and ask the Lord to show me, show me ways that I can make this better. Especially if I feel like I'm not doing a very good job. What are ways that I can make this run better? Show me, give me ideas. Give me something fresh, Lord. Show me something, show me something fresh that I can do for this week that would make this run better. Um, yeah, so I'm always looking, I'm always asking God, show, show me, show me, and then I'll do it. But, um, but I need some hand holding to get there, you know. Um, so, so pray and ask the Lord, how, how can I make my homeschool run better? What can I do more efficiently if that's something that you struggle with or you see areas that could use some improvement there? Okay, I appreciate you watching. Um, yeah, hit subscribe if you will, and then I'll show up in your, um, your subscription feed whenever I, have, I post new videos. And I often post things on the community tab um, within YouTube, and I think that only shows up on mobile. So, yeah, I'd love it if you subscribe and share my channel with other people that, um, that it might could help. Okay, appreciate you watching. Thank you. Thank you.